So, uh, just short about me. Uh, my name is Rafał Wasilewski, as you consider. Uh, I'm an IT architect with, uh, let's say, 15, 16, 18 years of experience, John Uh I've started as a system designer, then I progressed to, to, to more architecture roles, and now I'm uh, one of my roles is uh, being an uh, enterprise architect with uh, RFIT, our company, that we are supporting our customers, banks, transportation company with building the architecture culture. So, uh, just a quick discussion, as I mentioned, we talk about how to sell the IT architecture, so how to communicate, how to discuss our problems with uh, many different groups in the company to advise them or defend our point of views regarding some principal strategies and so on. We will not go, we will not go deep into the, let's say, discussions what, how to defend specific strategy or principle, we will talk just generally about uh, uh, about our role in, and how to communicate, how to identify the customers and so on. So quickly, uh, who are the IT architects? Just a quick question, uh, who of you is working as a solution or domain architect or platform architect? Officially or unofficially? Both. <laughs> what, do, what do you feel? Okay, any enterprise architects? No. Draco? No one? Okay, system designers, senior developers, nice, nice. So, uh, when we start to classify the IT architects, the most of uh, groups and documents will tell us that there are few standard groups. Application solution architects are the senior developers, designers that are they're responsible for developing the application, solving the problems inside the applications, designing the modules, concentrating on the language or, or, or such technical problems. Domain architects are architects responsible uh, for designing or taking the decisions about the architectural uh, development of a domain, business domain mostly. So if we are talking about banks, we are talking about the uh, domain architect for the core, the core application systems, right? If you are talking about banks and the front end, also online banking or I don't know, credits or something like this, each of such area will have its, should have its own domain architect. When we are talking about transportation, there will be procurement, finances, customer services. So th those are domain architects. The enterprise architects, uh, well, this is the, the level that is uh, used for communication between the whole the IT uh, uh, related topics and the stakeholders or business, right? So they are, they are the communication and they are the, the people that are defining the strategies for the whole company. It's very high level, very high abstract de decisions uh, influencing the, 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 the upper parts. Also we have platform architects, infra architects, security architects, all those... Uh, it's working? It's not working? It's working. Right. <laughs> so all those uh, architects are working together. What is different? As I mentioned, each of them has a different level of understanding and different level of impacting the, the strategy or, or the business impact of a company, including the platform that are, for example, cloud architects or, or uh, infra that are, that are responsible for designing or building the data centers in the company. What is common? The common is the way of how we work. So from my opinion, from my experience, all, on all, all those levels, we need to have three major skills. So, as David Knott, chief architect from SBC, in one of his articles uh, mentions, what makes you a good architect? You need to have three skills. So one is technical excellence, the second one is leadership power, the third one is communication mastery. Uh, we could discuss how to uh, achieve the technical excellence. We can discuss how to gain the leadership power that will push us through the company to, to, to make us more, uh, let's say, responsive to the customer needs or, or more expressive to, to, to convince someone to, to do something else. But the today's topic is the communication mastery. And that will be, I think, the most important for us because if we do not communicate properly, we will not gain technical excellence from our counterparts, our colleagues, our developers, our technology specialists depending on the level you are trying to get the, the, the understanding. And without the communication, we will not have the possibility to 
pre represent our leadership powers and to influence the people to do what we need to be done. So, very quick question. To whom do we speak as architects? Anyone? To business stakeholders. Business stakeholders. What about the IT? The developers. Yeah. So the IT, the business, and you mentioned the world. There is a third group that is a bit different, and I always define them as a separate one because someone would say, okay, the stakeholders are the business or are the IT chiefs. They are, but they are a bit different when we are trying to communicate with them. So we have the three main topics. <laughs> Good yeah. <laughs> Don't ask which one is the ugly. <laughs> so, uh, and as I mentioned, to each of those three groups, we will have a different type of communication. It's from as as I understand it, as I use it, we will have a completely different way of the, of speaking. So, we know to whom we speak: the business, the tea, the VIPs or stakeholders. Why do we speak? Mostly, those are the three most often answers. To propose something new, to solve a problem, to get approvals. Any other ideas? Why do we communicate as architects to other people? What do we want to have? Quick situation. The business is, uh, I don't know, we know that business is looking for a new uh, video chat solution. So we are preparing the strategy for that or we are developing our own POC and the business uh, director from the, from the branch that is responsible for the customer cost uh, communication is coming to us and said, guys, I just bought that from the market. <laughs> Never had such situation? Very difficult situation. I had. <laughs> In one of the banks I was working for, the chief digital, uh, not sorry, the digital transformation uh, director came to us and showed us, okay, guys, I bought this, I want to integrate it in our front end, the banking online application. Yeah, I have similar as well. Yeah. So, other, other, other things, why do we speak? We need to defend our positions, we need to defend the strategies. If we are talking about the enterprise level, we need to defend our solutions, if we are talking about the solution architects. Because something what we have developed, we always believe it's good, right? <laughs> Sometimes you can modify that. <laughs> but defending is also a way of communication. And how do we speak? It depends on the type of the people we are talking about, we are talking with, right? So, uh, I'm speeding a little bit, but okay. Uh, the IT, uh, most of us, are we are originating from the, from the technical uh, departments. There are few domain or solution, no, solution, no. Uh, enterprise architects that originated from the business side just switch to the dark side of the power, so to the IT. But most of us are the IT people. So uh, the question is, how do you speak with, with, with your colleagues from the teams that are not architects, from, with the developers, with the support teams? How do you convince them, for example, to, I don't know, to, 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 to approve something? Or how you are asking them for, for, your, for the help? Convince? Hmm? Convince, right. <laughs> so, show them the draft design and my advice, let them criticize. If, I, from the point of view of a domain and enterprise architect, when I'm designing something new, I have requirements from the business, they need a new, new functionality, I design some, I don't know, drawings, diagrams and so on. I always go to, to our uh, IT teams, that are responsible for the development of uh, each application and so on. I show them design and I, I ask them, guys, what do you think about it? And they start to say, no, it's completely shit, right? It's nothing used, uh, what, what you're proposing there. So I let, them, I let them to criticize. Then I'm discussing with them the boundaries, the restrictions, the dependencies resulting from the other sources that they don't know. Because very often when we are discussing with our DevOps teams, developer teams, support teams, security teams, they don't have a view on the other part of the company, right? So it's important to rem remind them, because sometimes they remember some, remind them that from their point of view, the solution may be not well enough or gives them a bit more job to be done by them, right? To develop new API, that they think that should be somewhere else. 
or they don't want to, I don't know, transform some documents, or they want, don't want to use, I don't know, Kafka or something like this, because they are, they are used to use uh, MQ or something like this, right? But we need to remind them that there are other inside the IT. But it is very important to use their criticism and their advices to, to influence our solution. Never, never, we should never be, okay. Uh, oh, that one also explained a bigger context than us. Uh, how they do. So that's what I'm talking about. When we have our solution, they did the analysis, they said, okay, it's not bad, but always you can try to ask them how you would do this. Sometimes they, they claim very mm, useful uh, advices or solution that you can change your, your design then, right? And the most important is to get them involved. Guys, we are from girls and guys, sorry, just generalizing. We are all from the IT. We like to be flattered, we like to be asked, we like to, okay, we like to do some kind of a show, right? We are the IT, we are the best, we know everything. It's all of us. Not, it's not, not only the, the, the developers, not only the support team, not only the product architects are doing that, this too. So use that and try to get the IT involved in your design, in promoting the strategy. It's kind of a, I don't know, lobbying, right? Like in politics. Any thoughts? Yeah, I believe that uh, most of the people in the IT are um, solution finders. Yeah, the people yeah. who want to find solutions, and that is what uh, is very common. Yeah, in the group. Yeah, exactly. So just give us or give them a problem, yeah. and they will be the most happy. If you are giving a solution, they yeah. will be criticizing and looking for the holes, yeah? Yeah, that's one, one of the way, but you have to remember that, for example, uh, from my point of view as an enterprise architect, I often have a situation when I receive information from the board. Guys, you need to redraw that, right? And you have three weeks to present that to the, to the design board or the architecture board. So first week I said, what to do, right? Then I quickly draw something and I start to, to, to consult, right? It depends on, on, on the approach. You can always start from asking people, okay, guys, we have such problems that, the, um, uh, I don't know, chief oh. architect is just expecting us to do a design and to connect those three applications, make a new flow, or, I don't know, make the application PCI compliant, right? Okay, so what I was uh, talking about, mm -hmm. what I was meaning. So, I understand that you have some, you know, some boundaries, some yes. contacts, etc. that the developers are not aware of, yeah. But uh, it's only about the way of communication, yeah? mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, start with, uh, I have yeah. something to show you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starting with a problem, yeah. asking them for help. Yeah. It's, very, it's also a very good approach. And I, I, yeah. it's, it's only the approach, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Exactly. Right. So, but always, we always get, are getting, we're always getting to the, get them involved. Get the IT involved in the, in the, in the design, in the approval process. Show them it's not as easy as they think but ask for help. It's always, always benefiting for all the, all the company. Magic? What about other architects? <laughs> <laughs> because you missed that group, I think. <laughs> well, no. They are in the third type of communication. But okay, uh, what Magic is referring to, we were working together in, in uh, like almost two years, right? So um, there is one very good approach when are, you are discussing with your fellow architects on your level or, or I don't know, talking to the, the, the domain architects or enterprise architects, is uh, get back to the let them criticize. Uh, Magic proposed a very, very uh, useful tool. So once a week, once bi-weekly, I don't remember. I think it was bi-weekly. Uh, we gathered all the architects from, from all the domains and we did some kind of a, let's criticize the solution. So uh, every of us was showing a problem that he's facing, the design that he's thinking about how to, how to solve the problem, I don't know, how to design a new, um, what was it, something with WSO2 implementation or something like this, the, the, the queue uh, for, for the solar, right? Okay. So that was, it was just an example. Actually, so, it was it was yeah. for purpose because uh, on the one way it's very useful tool. Uh, we call it the board of critics. Yeah. So it was very useful tool uh, to confront your ideas with fellow architects. 
And on the other, uh, the other uh, purpose was um, uh, to get them from the yard. Even if you don't have, didn't have uh, a problem, but you wanted to consult, you were, you, were, you were obligated once in a while to show what you are doing, just to confront with other opinions and uh, to uh, enhance your uh, communication skills. Yes, sir. What is the outcome? Um, most of the times, uh, first five minutes is. Uh, Beating the idea down to the ground. <coughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all, all wrong. You cannot do it this way. Uh, and after five minutes, when the presenter explains what was the boundaries, what was the rationale, um, uh, it uh, evolves into um, a better solution because uh, he gets input from not not from only his own ideas but also five. Yeah. So six, seven different view viewpoints, and each of the architects has different experience, so it proves that they were providing, they're providing, providing some useful thoughts, right? And also, you referred, as you maybe you remember, those two grumpy granddads in the, in the Muppets, right? <laughs> two grumpy guys. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we often refer to that when we were, we were performing that. It's very, very good practice to, to, to implement in the, in the architecture team. Uh, not only in the enterprise architecture team, but in all architectures team, when you are doing the inside the community of your fellow architects to do such such exercise, to, let's try to criticize all of the uh, solutions. So the business. Uh, does anyone ever work in some kind of a shop or was a sailor? Shop or sale? Yeah. Salesman, anyone? In shop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In shop, uh, everything. Well, I was working. I was working for Telekomunikacja Polska, so Polish Telecom, as a as a salesman for two years before I switched to the IT. It was very useful, and the first thing they teach you when you are starting to use the added values. It's very it's very basic thing. And all of us ever heard about it in the business presentation, in the sales presentation, in commercials for the, when they are showing us or I don't know some kind of a new project. But it's very very useful when we are talking about the business as a general. We are talking about business analysts, process owners, process leads. I don't know functional designers and so on, something like this. When we are forced to do some changes, I'm talking about the situation when when, when the change is coming from the IT, right? We have to change the standards and it will cause, we will need to rewrite the APIs because, I don't know, we need to put a new security uh, measures or new monitoring or something that will cost them. Then we always need to speak with them, to talk with them through the other values. So try to think when you are trying to, to, to do some changes and you need the business approval or uh, Invo business involvement to redesign the processes. For example, I have now a project when we are getting compliant to the PCI DSS uh, requirement for the banking, so the payment card industry data security standards. It's not obligatory, it's not regulatory, right? No one can tell business, okay, you have to switch your bank to, 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 to be PCI DSS compliant. It's not regulatory. It brings some risks when, when the data will Go out, but I never heard that Visa or Mastercard punished bank for losing the data of their customers. But let's say our chief architect is, is demanding us to the, do the PCI DSS. This will cost bank a lot of money. This will need to. Uh, this will require the business to rewrite the processes to get rid of the card ID from almost all the processes to hide the, the card number. Uh, from all the applications, unless the customer will will uh, give a clear consent that he has to, he, he wants to see the number. So it's very big change, and it's IT driven. So the only thing, how can we convince them or to convince them to, to approve or to get involved in that project, is to show them how this will benefit for the customer. The customer will be safer, right? He will have less chance to to lose his uh, card ID. Right? We will enforce the digitalization of the cards, so he will be more likely to pay through the GPay or Apple Pay or something like this. Use the arguments to, to, to show who and why we will benefit from that. And almost every solution that is uh, 
done brings a small benefit to business. They mostly don't know. Even even if we will say, okay, this will be a bit faster, your processes will be realized a bit faster, or will be more secure inside our network. We will not lose the data. <coughs> something. It always gives the business added value that is useful for them. Show them benefits, not only financial, but also, uh, as mentioned before, uh, the process support. Sometimes changes that we are implementing are impacting only the IT support, right? But for the business, the value will be now. When you have to call the, the support department for, I don't know, password change, you don't have to. You just push one button, you just provide your, your uh, secret password and you will change the, the, the generic password for all the applications, right? It's also a added value for business, it's a benefit. Uh, but very important thing when we are, we are talking with our business is not to hide the costs and risk of such change. Because if we will paint the world green, the, 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 the grass green, and they will see, okay, we will have a more secure, more reliable solution, the customer will be happier, and I mean the external customer, um, I don't know, we will have the faster, faster, faster um, uh, mobile service, something like this. Don't hide the cost and risk. Because sometimes, if they will be very good, uh, uh, sorry, I lost the word, uh, but they, they will eager to have the solution because you convinced them that this will be very, 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 very nice, and you hit something on the road, they will be disappointed and they will never trust you again. So at the beginning, we need to show the business the costs and the potential risks. Okay, guys, this idea is very important because it brings us many new opportunities, many new changes that will help our customers. The risks, we need to do a lot of work inside our IT. This will cost 350 mandates in the core department, some kind of a 2,000 mandates in the front end of the department, right? It's like this. You have to be aware that this for example, may influence or impact the delivery time of your business changes, right? You have to discuss that, that with them. And the last, but the, not the least, make them feel comfortable. So even if you will show them the costs, the risk, okay, guys, it's, I don't know, we will have problems with rewriting some kind of, some of like the APIs we are using, right? We have to get lost of that. Make them comfortable. They like to be in cozy places with blanket, warm. They are customers. They are customers. You are trying to sell a mobile phone to a customer. You are always showing them the benefits of the phone. You are mentioning, okay, but the battery is not the best one and the price is rather high, right? But if you have this phone, you will be very comfortable with that. Look how you go through the UA, right? So that's, that's the approach. That's the approach, and you can use it for, for everyone in, in so-called business. So I'm talking about the business analysts, process leaders, I mentioned before, uh, functional designers, and, and the rest of the team. That's the, let's say, generic approach. And then we have the stakeholders. For stakeholders, there is a big problem, because each of the level the level of architect right so the application architects solution architects have completely different stakeholders than the enterprise architects or the infrastructure architects and to define properly define the stakeholder so that people that are very vip very important person in the project this may be a project manager this may be a scrum master product owner right this may be a business analyst even if we have defined them as a business there is a very specific business or business analyst that is designing the uh, functional uh, flows in our application and uh, is translating the business demands, right? Sometimes he's the stakeholder in our change, in our communication. So one of the um, approaches is a stakeholder analyst. I've, uh, <coughs> I've been using that for... for uh, sometimes, so to properly identify the stakeholder is who is interested in this project, but I mean uh, who will, uh, let's say, benefit from that, right? Is it 
or who we need to have it. Uh, if you will do the stakeholder analysis, and please remember that, for example, the uh, IT operation manager is a stakeholder because when he will receive a new application, the, 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 he is, right? So you can you can okay you can split the meetings. It depends depends on the level uh, of approval you, you wish to have. I mean right? I mean just level on, of uh, informal language would be different when you speak to business, for example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it depends. I can yeah, of course, but uh, I had a situation in uh, ING Bank when I was. Uh, discussion one of the solutions I went informal to my CTO and thought okay he's IT right I will show him the benefits and he's, he's manager he's not IT. just just threw me away <laughs> so it, it happens right yeah. you never you never you never know when you will fix something some some obstacles or something like this but you have to remember that uh, okay I will quote um, David not from AJC once more the humans are human, right? Everyone has a goal. And if you will go through this analysis and you will try to identify what are the goals of each of those people, right? So why the, why the business is business owner is acting like this and how the support manager is acting like this and how the, uh, I don't know, chief of development department or, or director of development department is acting like this, maybe you will find the personal point in that, right? And especially if you are working a few years in a company, you are not new there, you have the interpersonal communication with them on formal already, right? You know how to speak uh, to, to those people because, I don't know, you spent few few lunches with them or you, ha you were on the <coughs> company party or, I don't know, Christmas party, summer party, something like this. You are getting to know those people. And this personal touch is sometimes very important because it may influence their decision to approve or reject your solution or your request, right? Or maybe, if we are talking about the uh, revert situation when we are defending our solution from the new that is coming, those people are often very influential and have influence on the other, so you can start lobbying them, right? I hope that answered you. No, no. <laughs> we, we can we, discuss. We will take it off. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, just keep quick takeaways. Just wrapping up. The IT, keep them involved. The business, show them the benefits and make them comfortable. And the stakeholders, the very individual approach, and we have to remember that. So, that's it from my side. Just a quick reference the article by David Knott, the document by Heather Collier. Colia, okay, and the uh, Golden Six Sigma, the stakeholder analysis by, by Elizabeth Swan. This will be on the LinkedIn. I will put your, give you links to the architect, uh, sorry, to the articles, and you can easily read more for that and, and involve the discussions between yourself. How to discuss your architectures, principles, design solutions with the other. Thank you.